Well, good morning and happy Friday to you, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from gorgeous San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. I hope you guys are excited, as I am. My favorite day of the week, y'all know, ends in D-A-Y. So, we're going to have a heavy discussion this morning. This is going to be one you might want to save for your cheerings and your cheerings cheerings because it has the uh, capacity and ability to change the generations of how your family will operate from this point forward. It has the potential. At the end of this message, it will be equal opportunity, unequal reward for those who are willing to pour into this understanding and actually take action on it. As in all things we say regularly, knowledge is not power. I'm sorry, the incarnate word lied to you. Knowledge is not power. You can graduate from MIT with a PhD, magna cum laude, and then go play video games in your parents' basement for 19 years, and your knowledge means nothing. Knowledge is only potential power, the potential unlocked when you take action. Let's gather the subject this morning, shall we? Let's traverse it. It's a controversial one, and those of you who know, know me, I love to address sacred cows, especially with church folk. All right now, you ready? Do you have an attitude about money? Do you have an attitude about money? Well, that's a loaded question because the truth of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, you do have an attitude about money. You may not acknowledge it as an attitude, simply defined as a way of thinking towards that creates feelings about. Let me say that again. A way of thinking towards that creates feelings about. You have an attitude about money, and here's what is fascinating. Money has an attitude about you. Money has an attitude about you, and here's the shocking truth. The attitude money has about you is exactly the attitude you have about money. What does that mean? Well, first of all, let's go back to the genesis of this, the beginning of this concept. When you were born into a, I hope, loving family, you were raised around people who had a certain attitude about money. You went to a school with people who had a certain attitude about money. You were educated by teachers who had a certain attitude about money. Now, unless you were in a very high growth environment, and unless you are surrounded by incredible focus on personal growth and personal development and spiritual leadership and discipleship, unless you are intentionally in that environment being raised that way, then guess what? You adopted the attitude about money of those around you and you still have it to this day 99% of the time. A lot of you do not realize this, for those of you that watched the movie The Ten Commandments years and years ago with Charlton Heston, you know where he split the Red Sea, that whole thing, the ten plagues. A lot of you may not realize this, that Moses' mother put him in a basket when he was a baby because the king was killing all the babies at that time. She wanted to save Moses, and the king's daughter at that time found the baby and adopted him. So Moses, who was of the poorest of the poor of slaves, was raised in the household of the king, in the ways of the king, in the thoughts of the king, in the order of the king, with the vision of the king. Moses, the poorest of poor slave, was raised in a household around abundance. Many of y'all did not know that. That's what made it so challenging when he came back and addressed Pharaoh and said, let my people go, because Pharaoh was his half-brother. Pharaoh was his half-brother. So when we look at this, here's what we realize, that like Zig Ziglar said, you are where you are and what you are because of what has gone into your mind. In this instance, this morning, in reference to money, you are where you are and what you are because of what has gone into mind. And if you want to change where you are and what you are, you must change what goes into your mind. It all begins with your thoughts and attitudes. Your thoughts towards and feelings about create your attitude around money. Okay, are you ready for this? 
Here's where it's going to get tight and all right, so y'all guys better buckle down. If you have an issue with abundant finances, abundant finances have an issue with you. If you are focused on what you lack, lack is focusing on you. If you are constantly having conversations about what you do not have, you will be getting more of not having enough. There are conversations of abundance and there are conversations of lack and scarcity. And if you are not aware, which my intention this morning is to bring awareness to you, if you are not aware of this, you are continuing to rehearse the same thing over and over, kind of like the old records, the vinyls of the old days that used to have a little scratch on it that would go, na na na, beep, na na na, beep, na na na. You're playing the same record over and over again. And you're shocked that you're not getting different results. And isn't that the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results? Well, ladies and gentlemen, how do you change your attitude about money? Well, you look at it. And what was the catalyst that got me focused on this subject? Yesterday, my mother, who is a school nurse uh, for South San Antonio when I was growing up as a child, attended my son's um, fifth grade graduation yesterday and they had people on violins and arts and choir and she leaned over to me and she said you know me huh it's such a shame that the children in the schools where I served didn't have this opportunity and I said mom what opportunity is that and she said the opportunity to explore the arts and and these instruments and I said well what do you think the issue was mom and she said it was simple it was finances and I said gotcha and I said so so what I, what I take from that is, is that abundance creates opportunities for other people and lack robs people of opportunities. And we had a moment to reflect on that. Gary Keller says it this way, the founder of Keller Williams, money is good for the good it can do, okay? And I know everybody's got weirdness about money and that's why I wanna go deep into it this morning. Um, you know people who adjust their halo and tell you, but you know, the Bible says money is the root of all kinds of evils. You have to slap them in their forehead, straighten out their little halo and say, that taint at all what the Bible says. It says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. You see where people screw it up is where they love money and use people. Instead of doing it the right way, you love people and use money. So money is available to all people. It is available to you in direct proportion to the value that you bring to others. And by the way, you can ask yourself questions if you need more money. You can ask yourself this question. Who do I have to become to be able to earn more than I'm currently earning? What opportunities are available to me? What gifts and strengths and talents do I possess that if I were to focus on those gifts and talents and strengths and apply them in service to other people, how can I maximize the income that is available to me. I mean, it's available, this is an abundant world. How can I maximize that? Zig Ziglar would say you could have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. This is why I ask myself regularly, how can I help millions and millions of people every day? How can I help millions of people every day? How can I help millions and millions of people every day? And what can I do today to begin practicing that prophetic future, if you will? And for me, it's the inspirational, motivational videos and the in-depth teachings. Oh, I know, all the gurus tell me my videos are too long. I ain't trying to please the gurus, y'all. I'm being obedient to practice and master my craft day after day after day after day after day. And you guys watch, those of you that follow me, you guys watch, boom. It's gonna be like in a day, kablamo, it's gonna blow up. And when that day comes, I'm gonna be like, I knew that was coming because I cannot I cannot sow abundantly without reaping abundantly. It's just a principle of life. So ladies and gentlemen, what's your attitude about money? Because guess what? That's money's attitude about you. Do you believe it's abundant? Do you believe that you can do great things with it? Do you believe that you'll be able to bless people's lives with it? Do you believe that you can make a difference in people's lives with it? Yeah, but money, Steve, <laughs> money changes you. Okay, no. Incorrect. Money amplifies who you already are. So what's your number one goal? Your number one goal is to become the very best version of yourself that you can become. Who do you have to become? So that you can do what you're called to do and have what you believe you can have and ultimately give from what you have received. Ladies and gentlemen, the attitude you have about money is the attitude that money has about you. Are you a money magnet? Do you speak abundance? Do you declare abundance? Do you expect abundance? Do you give abundance? Or do you speak 
think, feel, lack. What you think and what you speak, my friend, that's exactly what's coming your way. Thank God today that you have the ability to do what Zig Ziglar said. If you are where you are and what you are right now is a result of what has gone into your mind. If you want to change where you are and what you are, you must change what goes into your mind. And I end with this final little scripture. Everybody goes, yes, but Jesus said, it says in the Bible, it is, it is easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Absolutely. And there was an evident story of a rich young lawyer who could not do that. And it was a very sad thing. It's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. But you know what? If you get yourself right, it ain't hard at all to take a kingdom man and put money on him or her because he'll know what to do with it. Have a great day, guys.